All right. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Boy, isn't it good to be at church and be in the Lord's house? That's the best place I know. That's the best place I know is to be in the Lord's house with God's people. Yes, Lee. Psalm chapter 84. Psalm chapter 84. I'm just, I'm just quoting the verse before I get to reading it. Many Christians live in fear. I mean, they see the world, what's going on in the world, and it's one thing to be cautious, but it's another thing, I think, it's a step more to live in fear. And I don't think God wants us to live that way. Uh, many Christians live... An unhappy, miserable life. And there's no need in it. <clears throat> Mainly because they fail to know the many promises of God. Amen. You know, we have a book that we have a Bible study with on Sunday evenings at five. It's called the Bible Promise Book. It's a very good book. Uh, you're experiencing any kind of emotion or feeling or going through something or need to f know what the Lord says about a particular subject. You can look in that Bible promise book and look under the subject and it'll give you the different Bible verses. Now, I can only admonish you to read them. And I mean, it's God's word. So believe them. Amen. You know Read them and believe them. Uh, many Christians are unhappy because they do not know or perhaps they fail to believe the promises of God. Amen. This is my admonition to you. It's found in Psalm 34 and verse 8. Psalm 34 and ver verse 8. This is, I'm just giving you a few verses, a few thoughts before I read what I'm going to read. In Psalm 84. The scripture says in Psalm 34 and verse 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hey. He is good. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Yeah. I mean, those are true promises. Those are promises from the Lord. Now, Psalm 84, let me, uh, well, one more. I got Nehemiah 8 and verse 10. We are told in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, we are told that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, Psalm 84. How amiable, or how lovely, or how beautiful are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. He's saying, I can't hardly wait to get to church. I can't hardly wait to get to the temple. My heart is excited. I'm a, I can't hardly uh, catch my breath. It's so beautiful to get to the Lord's house. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yeah. Yea, the sparrow that found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. He is saying, I look around at the tabernacles and I see where uh, we go and worship God. And I see the little birds have made nests there in the temple. And how wonderful it is, how wonderful it must be for the birds. He's envious of those little birds. They get to stay in the Lord's house all the time. They're happy. 
They're filled with joy. And that's what he's saying there when he says that to swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Selah. Man, every day, go, you know, it's like I'm in the church, I'm going to the Lord's house. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord all the time. This guy is happy. This guy is happy. He's glad to go to church. I mean, Harry, he says hallelujah louder than you do. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he just, I'm just saying, this man's happy. He's happy on his way to church. He's happy on the, on the way to the Lord, uh, Lord's house. Yes. Blessed is a man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca, passing through the valley of Baca, the valley of Baca is a valley where there's sorrow. It's a valley where there's weeping. It's a valley where there's depression. But he says, Look what he says, passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well like a spring. Yeah. The rain also filleth the, po the pools. Yeah. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Yeah. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Yeah. Give ear, O God of, of Jacob, Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. Hallelujah. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Yes. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Look at this, O oh, sweet Shirley. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. He's got a lot of good things for you guys. God has a lot of good things. Just wait patiently. He's telling you to wait. Wait on him. Wait on the Lord. Verse 12 is the last verse. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Over the last 11 Psalms written by Asaph, we have been constantly, constantly over the last 11 Psalms, we've been constantly reminded of God's judgment, along with, of course, His mercy and grace and forgiveness. Some of those 11 Psalms told us or warned us that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And how God's judgment came upon the people of God as well as the world around them. But this psalm, this psalm speaks of joy and the presence of God. We might could say it like this, joy in the presence of God. <coughs> God's people. I say this is, I, I believe it's true. God's people should look forward to going to the Lord's house. Hallelujah. God's people should look forward to it. There's something there. There's something about coming together with other, other believers yes, sir. that is just blesses our heart just to be around them. Yes, uh, God's people should look forward to being in God's house. And I just put in parentheses, the church, the church. We ought to love to be here, hey. long to be here. It is our prayer for God in the person of the Holy Spirit to be present at every service. Yes. It is Jesus who said, where two or three are gathered in his name, there he would be in the midst of us. Amen. We come together to worship and praise the holy name of God. That's our purpose here. It's not about a program. It's not about entertainment. It's not even about social gatherings. We come here to worship and praise Almighty God. Hallelujah. We sing. We pray. We preach. We fellowship all in the name 
and of the presence of Jesus our Savior. For where two or three are gathered together, there he will be in the midst. God's people, God's people, should long to be in the Lord's house. They should long and hope, even pray, that they might meet with God while they're there. Like the old song said, Oh, I want to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. This is a beautiful psalm about enjoying the presence of God. You ever thought about that? You know, I tried that when I was reading this. I said, enjoy the presence of God. Just enjoy it. Think about him. Dwell on him. The psalmist, this guy is so happy about going to church that it takes his breath away. Man, I'm going to church. I'm going to meet with people of God and I want more than anything to feel, to see, to experience the presence of God. That's why I go. He sings, he shouts praises to God. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I, I said this, he shouts praises to God in his chariot on his way to church. <laughs> He's singing praises to the Lord, or she is, as they're headed to church. By the way, it's not a bad idea, is it? Sing and make yourself happy before you even get there. Try to lift yourself up. Let me tell you, sometimes you have to really, you have to try sometimes. You have to try to lift yourself up. You got to lift yourself up sometimes. On Sunday mornings when we meet back there in, in the time of prayer early at 9 o'clock, I tell the men, it's Harry and Brian and David, they come in there, and, and every now and then someone else will come in. But I say, okay, man, leave your, leave your burdens right now. Leave them all, turn them away. Get rid of them. Lift yourself up. We got to make others. We, we can't let other people know we got burdens. We want to be there to lift their burdens. We want to be a burden bearer and help them. Uh, meet people with a smile on your face. Uh, stick your hand out uh, for fellowship. Uh, be uh, kind uh, to one another. Uh, uh, sing along the way as we worship uh, the Lord. And I said you can enjoy that all the way to church riding in your chariot. <coughs> Anyone who sees someone who is full of joy and happiness, they know they're on their way to church. That's what I said. Amen. Man, I'm going to put that convertible top down about 6.30 next Sunday morning. <laughs> And let these white locks flow. <laughs> oh, I want to do what I tell you all to do, but I think it's a good thing to lift up your voice even on your way to the Lord's house. That man is not there simply for the social aspect. Uh, he's there because he hopes to meet with God. He or she hope that they will meet with God. Amen. To get a glimpse of Jesus. Do you think if we came tonight and there was some way that we could get a glimpse of Jesus that it might change our life forever? Oh, you all think man. it might? That we could catch a glimpse of him? Oh my goodness. That would be such a wonderful experience. Amen. To see the beauty of his holiness, we are told that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But I would still like to catch a glimpse of him. This psalmist thinks about how wonderful it would be if he could live and eat and drink and sleep at the temple. He wants to be at the temple all the time, every opportunity that he can. He wants to be there at the temple. He wants to be in the constant presence of God. 
He envies the little birds that make their nest in the temple. He wants to be near the altar where he feels the presence and closeness of God. How happy he would be to be singing praises morning, noon, and night. He feels safe and secure at the temple. Well, what a shame it is when we hear about these terrible tragedies, isn't it? Yeah. About how these nuts go into these places. These people are totally innocent and defenseless. Little children. Hmm. Oh, but I want to feel safe when I go to church, I'll tell you that. Amen. We know that as Christians, the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. Yes. We know we can worship Jesus 24-7. But I think, I'm just telling you as a preacher, as a pastor with more than 50 years experience, there's something special about going to, to church and worshiping with family and friends. There's something Amen. special about that. The church house should be filled with praises to our King. Every service, we should strive to fill the air and our hearts with the joy of the Lord. Happy is the man or woman who is trusting in the Lord. Happy is the man or woman who is trusting in the Lord. The psalmist says that even when I am in the valley of weeping, Jesus will come and lift me up. Yes. He even said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Bible clearly teaches us this truth, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him or her out of them all. Amen. Someone said, we're on a journey. We're on a journey. With Jesus always with us, yes. we can rejoice through it all. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 89, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend thee. David said, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Yes. What Satan meant for evil, God will make it good. We grow stronger and stronger and stronger every day. From strength to strength, he said. The idea is this. I may feel weak, but when I lean on Jesus, I can become strong. Amen. And let me say this about that. When you come through a valley of depression... When you come through a valley of sorrow, trusting the Lord, when you get to the other side, you're going to be stronger than you were when you started in. From strength to strength is what he's saying. I was weak, and I knew I was weak, and I leaned on Jesus, and I needed his help, and he got me through. And when I got to the other side, I feel stronger now that I'm on the other side. He got me through. He carried me all the way. God is our defender. God is our protector. You, O oh Lord, have called us and anointed each and every one of us. Yes. You have great plans. Listen to this. God has great plans for you. Amen. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to live in the richest palace on earth. Hallelujah. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'd rather live in, in just on poverty row. And have the smallest of, of uh, care than to dwell in the riches and the palaces of the wicked. Amen. To hang around that group. Amen. It should be our desire to be close to God. As close to God as we can. He wants to be so close to you, He lives inside of you. Yes. One day with Jesus... Is worth more than all the money this world has to offer. Hallelujah. One day with Jesus is worth more than all the money this world has to offer. Amen. 
He fills our heart and our life with grace and peace and glory and joy and happiness. Something that the world, they think they can buy it. But as we know, money can't buy happiness. Some people think so, especially when they're young. But here's the promise. Do you know there's no good thing that God will withhold from you? There is no good thing that God will withhold from those who walk uprightly. Hallelujah. And as we finish this psalm, it is my belief that Jesus is our greatest treasure. And he says at the very last thing, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful psalm? I think that is an absolute beautiful psalm. Hallelujah. All right. Let's be dismissed in prayer. Uh, Russ, I'll ask you to do that for us tonight.